Hi everyone, it's Sherry and Loki, and we hope that you are having a wonderful day. Don't we, Loke? Don't we, Loke? Y'all, today we're going to make something simply cute. Stay tuned. Y'all, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much for the awesome ways in which you support me and my channel. Loki is here with me today, so I thought I'd let her say hello because you'll probably hear her walking back and forth in the background. But today, y'all, we are going to do something so simple, but so elegant. Remember back in the day when we used to make folios? Long before we ever started doing the fancy folios that had a flip over page and waterfalls and all of that, just a plain old folio. One that you could put your papers in and easily navigate and be proud to carry it. That's what we're going to do today. Y'all, we're going to make this beautiful folio. It will hold eight and a half by 11 papers. So you'll be able to make this and take it to a meeting. If you're planning a wedding, this would make a beautiful holder for some of the things that you might pick up. If you're a real estate agent, it's a great way to hold some of those important papers that you might need to give to your clients. And the beauty of this one, y'all, I am going to introduce you to a brand new closure technique. And I think this closure technique simplifies it all for us. So I'm going to give you a closer look in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here is a closer look at this folio. When finished, it measures nine by 11 and a half. It is going to be big enough on the inside to hold those eight and a half by 11 inch papers. We're not doing any fancy folds or anything like that. We're truly making this a paper holding folio. It's going to be that simple. So I haven't decorated this one because I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I wanted to show you how to make it. And one of the things that I'm very proud of and one of the things that I really try to do on the channel is find new ways for us to finish off our projects. So I decided to go online and look for some snap closures and I found these and these are just perfect. Not only for this folio, but our journals and everything because they come in a variety of sizes and colors. And this style is what I chose because I wasn't sure if it was going to work. So I didn't invest a whole lot but I think that for a lot of you, not all, but a lot of you, this is really going to solve how do I close that notebook? How do I close that journal? Because it's just a snap, a two-part snap. So here is how our folio looks. It is very simple, y'all. It's simply a folio. No fancy folding, none of that. The only thing that I did do was I added some elastic to the corners so that we can take our papers and we can tuck them in just like that. Just like folios back in the day used to be. You had the elastic and you simply tucked your papers under. So then on this side, I added a nice little pocket, another way to hold those documents. So this really is a document holder. You can dress yours up as much or as little as you want, but this is a great way, a very grown-up way to hold and carry important documents that you might need. So I also added a little pocket so that you can collect business cards if you want, or you can even tuck in receipts if you want to do that. I'm not adding a big pocket with the closure because y'all, we are doing this the old way. It is truly just going to be a document holder. So here's what we're going to need to make it. So I am using chipboard and I have three pieces of medium weight chipboard. If you want to know anything about the chipboard that I use, Please check my description box, check the link in the description box for my Amazon storefront, and then click on the button that says paper, and you'll be able to see some of the papers that I use, as well as the chipboard that I use on my projects. And just check out the description box, and it'll tell you everything that you would need to know about this particular chipboard. So I have one piece that measures one by 11 and a half, I have two pieces that measure nine by 11 and a half. And I have one piece that measures eight and three quarters by 11 and a quarter. 
Then I have this beautiful piece for the pocket. This measures nine by six. And then I kept some of the scrap from cutting this. And we're going to use this to make the actual business card holder or receipt holder, whatever you want to use it for. And y'all, like I said the other day, as I was organizing my space, I came across my Rossi papers and I hadn't used them in a while. I think it's been over a year, maybe longer. But once I saw them, I knew that I had to start using them again. So today we're going to use the beautiful feather paper from Rossi, R-O-S-S-I. And I don't know if you can see that gold in there, but all of their papers, or most of their papers, I believe, are infused with gold of some type. And this is a beautiful feather paper. We're going to be using this. This paper is 20 by 30. In total, we'll probably end up using about one and a half sheets. So we're going to go ahead and start by covering the outside of the folio. All right, y'all, so I'm going to flip this sheet over and we're going to place this down. Now you don't have to have the Rossi wrapping paper. If you don't want to join papers together, having a nice quality sheet paper is the way to go. But y'all, it does not have to be the Rossi paper. Using my wrapping paper, I really don't need that much space in between. So I'm actually reducing my spacing a little bit. We are going to go ahead and just place down our second piece. Then I'm going to take my finger blade and we are just going to cut off the excess paper. Like this. I'm not throwing it away, I'm just moving it out of the way. I was working out at the table in the other room and I left my big old spatula out there. So I'm just going to use my phone folder to go over and get everything nice and stuck. Then I'm just going to take this and stand it up because it is wrapping paper. I really don't have any worries about it cracking. Y'all, this is some of the best luxury wrapping paper on the market. I absolutely love Rossi papers. So now we're going to miter the edges and if mitering presents any problems for you, you can take that five in one tool, place it right there, and then just go ahead and cut like this and you'll have your mitered edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut through on all four sides. All right, so now I'm going to use my tape runner to place tape on these pieces. And I can use my tape runner because these foldover pieces will be sandwiched between another sheet of paper, which is going to hold them in place. And y'all, what I like about the new closure I'll be using is I don't have to worry about taping down ribbon or anything like that. If I wanted to use ribbon or crinkle seam binding, it can truly be used just as a decorative element and I don't have to use it as my closure. So we're just going to get this nice and stuck. Let's go ahead and do this one. And y'all, so far so good with this tape runner. I'm finding that it's performing very well for me. I'll continue to test it and we'll talk about it in an upcoming video. So now I'm just going along the ends. We're going to go along and basically we're just squaring everything off, making it very nice and professional looking. So that is the outside of our folio, y'all. I think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So now on the inside, we're going to place down another piece of the very same wrapping paper. I'm not going to use a different liner, 
But y'all, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip this over so that you can see the difference in what I'm doing. And I've moved my picture in picture over just a little bit more because I do want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do a no measuring technique on the liner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece, we're just going to even it with the edge of the paper, but we're going to take the jacket and we're going to slide it off the paper about half an inch. So you can see here is the liner paper that I'll be using. Here is the edge of the jacket. It's hanging over the edge about half an inch. So all I'm going to do now is just pick up and I'm just going to tear it using the edge of the jacket. So now I'll have this piece that will definitely fit on the inside this way. Now we need to do the same thing this way. So we're just going to take it and I have this edge here. This time I'm just going to use my finger blade because it'll be hard for me to grab that little piece and I'm going to trim. Y'all this is how I used to do things back in the day before I had a scoreboard or a trimmer, I would just place my pieces against one another and that is how I would figure out my pieces. So we are ready to go. All right, y'all, so now I'm going to take my tape and we're just going to cover our chipboard so that we can place down the inside liner. So now we're going to take our tape and we're going to place our tape along the outer edges of all four sides of the liner. Then we're going to remove the backing from the double-sided tape from both the inside liner as well as the jacket. And we'll be able to join the two together. All right, y'all, so now that we have our tape around the edges of the liner as well as the chipboard jacket, I'm going to remove the tape backers and we are going to put these two together. And again, it's going to be beautiful. And you don't have to worry about magnet placement or anything like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just remove two of these pieces because I'm working with large pieces and I really want to keep it under control. And then I placed the tape backer back on that part so that it wouldn't get stuck before I wanted it to. So then we're going to take this and we're just going to put it down like this. So I'll do it in sections like this to really control it. So I'll peel away my remaining backers. So now I'm just going to take my big old spatula and we're going to work that paper into place. And y'all, wasn't that easy? And isn't this beautiful? So we're going to go in and work our spines the way that we always do. So let's just go in getting that nice and crisp. I'll come at it from the other side, making sure that I have a nice stick. Boy, I had absolutely forgotten how beautiful this paper is. Y'all, it's gorgeous. This is non-sponsored. There is nothing like Rossi fine Italian wrapping paper. This is just gorgeous. So now that we have this piece, we're going to go ahead and do the piece on which we're going to place the elastic. So I still have this much left from when I used it to make the inside liner. We're going to go ahead and peel away the tape backers from the eight and three quarters by nine and one quarter inch piece. So I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it right there. 
And now I'll use my finger blade again to trim away the excess. And again, I'm going to use my snail tape runner to go along all four edges, lay down some tape. And then we're just going to fold over like this. Now for the elastic, I decided to go with this pink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the elastic and just place it in the corner like this and wrap it around. But in order to hold it, I'm going to take some strips of tape and we're going to put the tape right there. So I am just going to place it in the tape, but I'm also going to use glue because I want to make sure that I have a really good stick on this elastic. So I'm going to take my glue, put it on the elastic, and I'll take that elastic and I'll stretch it out into the tape. Having that tape there really is just to hold the elastic in place while I work the project, but it's the glue that I'm relying on to hold everything in place to give me that permanent hold that I want. So I'm just going to take a little bit of tape there. Peel away the backer. Then we'll fold over like this, figuring out the size that we need. I'm going to go ahead and just place some glue right there. We'll place this in our tape. And then what I did was I took a little scrap piece of paper. I'm going to take some glue. And I have some glue on that. And we're just going to take this and we put it down to sandwich in that elastic because I don't want it coming up. And so there is one elastic corner. You can do all four. I'm just going to do two. But if you want, you can definitely do all four. We're going to take it, wrap it around this end like that. And I'll go ahead and take my tape and put it down. And we'll add some glue right there. And I can pull this and stretch it out between the tape and the glue. And now we'll take it and wrap it around on this end. I'm going to take some more tape and we're going to place it right there. Peel away. And let's check it to make sure that we have nice coverage there. And y'all, I think we do. So I'm just going to take this and place the beginning part in the tape. And then I'm going to glue this part here where that tape is sticky. Just making sure that we have everything in the tape. Then I'll take another piece of scrap. We'll add some glue to the scrap. And we'll take that scrap piece and we're going to make sure that both pieces of our elastic are under the scrap piece. 
And y'all, yes, this is very ugly. This is not the outside. We're going to take this and when we put it down, we're going to put it in our book just like this. So I am going to do this using my glue. I'll go ahead and just place my glue around the outer edges, making sure that I place glue on that elastic as well. And I'm being very generous with this glue. So we're going to go ahead and just really get nasty with this glue. So now we can take this piece and when we put it down, we're going to put it down, trying to keep it nice and even, top and bottom. Before it dries, you want to make sure that it's not hitting your spine. Mine isn't. So I will just go ahead and press everything into place. I'll even bring in my clips to clip this while we work on the pocket. So now let's make the pocket. We're going to take the piece that measures nine by six and on the nine inch side we scored a quarter and half an inch. And then we rotate it to the six inch side and do the same thing. Score at a quarter and half an inch. Those are the only scores that you make. So then we are just going to fold and burnish our scores. So now I'll take my finger blade, we'll go to the second score mark and drag straight down. Second score mark, drag straight down. And then we remove that corner piece. So your piece is going to look like this. I'm just going to use my detailing scissors to go in and notch out little angles. So now it looks like this. So now we are going to take our glue, place glue here so that we can join this piece with that piece. You know, that's how we're creating that pocket. And then we'll fold this over and add a little glue right there. We can fold that over. Now we have our pocket. I'm just going to hold it while I put the glue on the rest. So we'll add glue on these lips here. And one thing I forgot to do that I am going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors and cut at a slight angle. I think I want a deeper angle. So I'm just cutting at an angle. So now let's bring our piece back in. When I place it down, y'all, I'm going to take it and place it as close to the spine, but it's not hitting the spine. I want to make sure that I don't have it on the edge here because we will be using that closure. I am going to go ahead and remove these and I'll take my bone folder and go along the edges to make sure I have it nice and straight. And I'll try to go in with that bone folder and get everything nice and stuck. And so there is my pocket. I'm going to go ahead and take this extra piece and a piece of scrap and we're going to create the little pocket for this. So I am just going to use some glue. So I'm just going to place that there and smoosh that around in the glue. So now I can come back with my big old spatula and we can really work that glue into our paper. I am just going to trim away my excess. Then I'll take my scissors and y'all I'm just going to eyeball it and trim a piece that I think 
is wide enough to be a pocket here. Then I'm going to take my little detailing scissors and we're just going to cut in a finger notch. So now we can take our glue, add our glue on the edges. And we can take this piece and I think I'll put it right there. And y'all, that gives me my little pocket. Our folio is complete, except we're going to take our closure and I'm going to show you how easy it is to put this down. Now I'm going to be putting mine down using glue. It's meant to be stitched, but y'all know I'm not trying to do any sewing. So we're using glue. It works. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it right there, very close to the edge, like I just did there. And then just press it. And then we can take our snap. And these snaps are very strong and just snap it on like that. Then you're going to want to fold it over, but you want to make sure that you don't make it so tight that it's squeezing your pocket. So I'm going to take mine, making sure that I'm not squeezing that pocket at all. And I'm just going to add some glue here. I just got it on the front. And we're going to take this and just fold it over and stick it. So you can see that I did not pull it tight. We want to make sure that we have some expansion room so that if you are putting a pin loop or something like that inside of yours, or you want to even put a notebook in one of the pockets, you will have that room to do so. And so what I found is that this sticks very well to paper using my reptile adhesive. I am going to go ahead and put the lid back on my glue bottle. Now you can certainly decorate this however you want. I'm not decorating mine because I want to keep it in its natural state of simplicity, but it's awfully, awfully beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and open it. So now we can take our eight and a half by 11 inch paper. We can put it in the pocket or we can take it and tuck it here. You can take an eight and a half by 11 inch legal notepad and put it in here. You can put it here, but this is truly the simple form of a folio, but it is the highly functional form of a folio because it's meant to carry documents and that's exactly what we'll be able to do with this. So I am going to take this, we're going to close it very easily like that. So y'all, there we have it. We have two beautiful folios made using that gorgeous Rossi Italian wrapping paper. And we also are now using a new closure technique. And y'all, I think we love it. I'll have these linked in the description box below for anyone who is interested in getting these closures. But y'all, I have to say that these are absolutely gorgeous and just so simple to make. So I hope that you have enjoyed Simplicity. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.